to the C, to the H, to the L O E E E, just Chloe. Hey everyone, welcome back to Just Chloe. It's me, Chloe, and today we're going to be doing another read aloud video. So, we're going to be reading Frankie Pickle and the Pine Run 3000, written and illustrated by Eric White. Let's read. Chapter one, presenting the Prince of Peril, the Sultan of Suspense, the Duke of Danger, the amazing Piccolini. Thank you, thank you. Prepare to be astounded as I escape from these unbreakable chains, blindfolded, upside down, while suspended over a tank filled with Mutant man-eating flounder. Was it over the shoulder and under the elbow or over the elbow and under the leg? Something's definitely not right here. Tangled in twine, Frankie flopped onto his living room floor. He was too busy wiggling around to notice the stares of the other possum scouts. How did you get so twisted? How did you get so twisted up? Said Frankie's mom, who was also the troops' municipal mother. You were only supposed to tie a basic sailor's loop. Frankie tried to shrug, but his arms were pinned to his chest. He glanced over at the other scouts. They had all tied their knots correctly. That's that one looked too easy, said Frankie. I wanted to come up with a super duper knot. Why didn't you just ask for help? said mom. She tugged at the rope. This is way too tight to undo by hand. I get extra points for that, right? said Frankie. Not when it's the wrong kind of knot. The other scouts started to snicker. They'd probably be laughing their lungs out if Frankie's mom wasn't there. Even his best friend Kenny had a hard time keeping a straight face. Frankie had to do something to impress them. I don't know how to get free without any help. He sucked in as much air as he could, then tried with all his strength to snap the ropes like a superhero. That only made the night knots tighter. The ropes burned his skin. Stop that before you pop something, said Mom. I need to cut you loose. Would you like to borrow my safety scissors, said Carter Hawkins. I always keep a pair in my emergency utility pouch. This isn't an emergency, said Frankie, turning an odd shape of bluish purple. Why, thank you, Carter, said Mom. That's very handy of you. A possum scout is prepared for anything, said Carter. And Carter always was, like the time when Kevin twisted his ankle and Carter made a splint out of popsicle sticks. Or when Oliver got stung by a bee, Carter knew to get put mud on the bee sting. And when Lucas got woozy from being hungry, Carter had an extra snack pack. That is me. I get woozy when I'm hungry. Um, he was such a scout superstar that some of the other kids were convinced he was actually, he actually was part possum. Carter unzipped the pouch around his waist and fetched the scissors for Frankie's mom. Then she went to work snipping Frankie's ropes and pried into little pieces. There's Carter looking like a superhero. Chapter two, after Frankie was finally untangled, it was time to hand out the Marit, is that how you say it? Marit badges. Everyone gathered on the living room floor around a fake camp campfire mom had made from toilet paper, tubes and orange tissue paper. Whoa, how do you say this? Our girl, the troop's mascot, wore a yellow scarf, scarf for the occasion. This is a very special ceremony, said mom. Today marks the last meeting of the fall session. All of you who have completed the knot tying badge have earned enough possum points to move up in rank from Pajimi to Shrew. The boys all cheered. Moving up in rank was a big deal. It meant you now got to do stuff that was too dangerous for Pajimis, like shoot a bow and arrow, make a fire, and go camping in the woods. It was like being inducted into the League of Awesome. Why is there a dog? Maybe it's Frankie's dog. 
Hawk lad, we pronounce you a member of the League of Awesome. Go forth with your awesomeness. This is going to be sweet. Wait, where's mine? I'm sorry, Wonder Pickle, but you haven't earned enough awesome points. There had to be some kind of mistake. How could Frankie not become a shrew scout with the rest of his possum troop? I'm sorry, Frankie, said Mom. You didn't complete the not assignment, so I can't award you the badge. But I'm your son, said Frankie. You have to earn it the same as everyone else, said Mom. Frankie could hear the other scouts whispering. Now was not the time for him to plead his case. That's cool, he said. I'll catch up with you guys at the next rank. But truthfully, it was anything but cool. Chapter 3. Looking Long after the other scouts went home, Frankie was still very upset. He went into the kitchen where Mom was preparing, not preparing, preparing dinner. His baby sister, Lucy, was playing on the floor with pots and pans. There has to be a way for me to move up in a rank, said Frankie. What if I do the knots again? Mom diced a tomato badge. My mom diced a tomato. Badges have to be earned during troop meetings. Otherwise, it isn't fair to the other scouts. You can try again next session. But that's not for like a month, said Frankie. I know you're disappointed, but those are the possum scout rules. That's so unfair. Lucy badged a pot with a wooden spoon in agreement. Frankie's dad and, and older sister Piper arrived home from softball practice in time to hear the commotion. What did we miss, said Dad. As everyone sat down for dinner, Frankie brought Dad and Piper up to speed. Sounds like a tough break, bud, said Dad. You're more of a weasel than a shrew. Than a shrew. Anyway, said Piper. Mom gave Piper the look. The one that turns people to stone? What about the Pine Run 3000, said Dad. Of course, said Frankie. What's the Pine Run 3000, said Piper. Only the greatest race ever invented, said Frankie. Then how come I've never heard of it? Because you're a girl. Piper pushed up her sleeve and made a fist. Say that again. He's right, actually, said Dad. You have to be, be a possum scout to, to compete. Every fall, scouts build model cars out of pine wood and race them against all the other troops in the area. The 3,000 stands for the 3,000 inches of track used to make up the final race course. And the winner of the race is awarded five possum points, said Mom, which is enough to advance me in rank from Pigimi, Pigimi to Shrew, said Frankie. But the race is this weekend, said Mom. We're going to be out of town visiting your Aunt Rachel. Frankie and Dad looked at Mom with their best impression of sad puppies. Mom sighed. I'll call my sister and reschedule. Dad looked at Frankie with a twinkle in his eye. And said, I bet if we hurry, we can make it to the hobby store and pick you up and pick you up a car kit before it closes. You haven't even finished your dinner yet, said Mom. I'm full, said Frankie, giving Mom a drive-by hug as he rushed past her. Me too, said Dad as he kissed Mom on the cheek. But I made blueberry pie for dessert, said Mom. Too late, Frankie and Dad were already pulling out of the driveway. Chapter 4. Humphrey's Hobby Shop was like a candy store for your brain. Whether you carved pom-poms or puffy pan paints, glue guns or glitter pens, every aisle was a rainbow assortment of do-it-yourself delights. There's no time to wonder, said Dad. The store closes in 15 minutes. Sure thing, said Frankie. I'm right behind you. What's that rock polishing machine? Look at, at, look at all those colors of felt and pipe cleaners and lawn gnomes. Who knew there were so many different kinds of googly eyes? This place is like the kingdom of cool. Come with us on a magical flight where colors never seemed so bright. Good thing I, I have my shades. Can I get a what, 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 what? Let your worries be forgotten when you're doing, when you're doing all your shopping because plastic fruit never goes rotten and clouds are made of cotton. I'm polyester and sprinkle glitter here, a, a snip, a little here. These googly eyes can tell no lies. That sweater vest could win a prize. For a scrapbook, you can share. You think so? He's basically just exploring the store. You don't have to be artistic to make something fabulistic. That tree looks so realistic. 
Be jewel like a fool. Knit your cozy for your nosy. If you can't dream it, you can make it. Just make sure you pay before you take it. At Humphrey's Hobbyland of Hobbies. Oh, that was amazing. That rhyme was good. Are you dancing with that statue, said Dad. Um, no, said Frankie, casually returning the lawn gnome to the shelf. Dad steered Frankie in the direction of the race car kits. Humphreys didn't disappoint. There were dozens of models on display. Some looked like sport coupes. Others were shaped like dragsters. Some barely looked like cars at all. Things sure have changed since I was your age, said Dad. There were so there are so many different kinds. It's going to be hard to decide. I want this one, said Frankie. He pulled a car with a sleek, curvy design of the shelf off the shelf. That's pretty sleek, said Dad, but it looks kind of flimsy. How about something with a little more Nope, this is the one, said Frankie holding firmly to the speedster. Don't you want my help picking it out? I already found it. With only two minutes until closing, Dad reluctantly bought the race car kit. Frankie was on his way to start to the starting line. Chapter 5. By the time Frankie and Dad returned home, the girls were all settled in for the night. Lucy was drifting asleep as she snuggled her favorite stuffed monkey. Piper was in bed reading a book about a girl with a crush on a vampire base basketball player. That's random. And mom was relaxing in her favorite chair with a mug of chamel, chamel tea and an old movie that had plenty of singing and smooching. Ew. How do you guys make out? said mom. Frankie held up the bag uh, from Humphrey's Hobby Shop and gave it a little shake. I'm ready to rumble, he said. No rumbling until the morning, said Mom. It's time for bed. We'll work on it tomorrow, first thing tomorrow. We'll work on it together, first thing tomorrow, said Dad. But I want to build it on my own, said Frankie. Oh, Dad deflated like a balloon. Well, maybe you'll change your mind when you wake up. Frankie hugged and kissed his parents goodnight, then went up to his room. On the way to his bed, he almost tripped over a white ball of fur. Argyle uncurled himself, rolling onto his back to have his belly rubbed. No, it's their dog. No time for that, Pooch. I have to rest up for an important mission, said Frankie. He threw up on his he threw on his pajamas and hopped under the covers with the bag from Humphreys. Tired as he was, there was no way Frankie could wait until morning to see what was inside the race car kit. He tore open the box and ripped the directions in half. Oops, won't need those anyway, he thought. He, smilled, he spilled the pieces onto his comforter. There was a wedge of wood wheels, axles, turbo vents, paints, decils, and even a miniature drive, driver. Everything to build a winning race car. Awesome, said Frankie with a yawn. Then he drifted asleep under a blanket of car parts. Chapter 6. There was a knock on Frankie's door. Morning, champ, said Dad. Just just checking to see if you wanted any help. Frankie poked his face, his head out of his room. His face was smeared with grease. No thanks. I'm ready off. I'm already off to a great start. Can I at least see it? Sorry, no peeking till it's done. All right, said Dad. I'll be downstairs if you need. I won't. Frankie closed his door, not noticing the disappointed look on Dad's face. And now to complete my masterpiece, Frankie thought. His dad is sad that Frankie doesn't want his help. One more little smidge and I'll be done. Chapter 7. Frankie had some, somehow managed to snap off the nose of his car. Oh well, nothing a little glue can't fix, couldn't fix, and some duct tape and maybe some spackle. He went downstairs to get the supplies to repair his car. Look. He braked it. Dad looked up from his bowl of cornflakes. How's it coming along, he said. Ready to take that car out for a spin? Just about, said Frankie. Do you have any spackle next to the paint rollers? Anything I can help you with? I'm good, said Frankie. Nothing worth getting your cereal soggy over. Okie dokie, Dad sighed. Frankie gathered everything he needed and returned to his room. He went to working, gluing, and duct taping, and spackling his car, his race car. Before long, it was finished. Maybe he could have waited for the spackle to set before he painted it, but he was sure the colors would be less squeaky 
once the car had dried. Frankie took a step back to admire his handiwork. There's no way my car can lose the Pine Run 3000. Chapter 8. Frankie couldn't wait to show off his masterpiece to the other possum uh, scouts. But when he got on the school bus the next morning, the other kids were already crowded around Carter. It's so shiny, said Kevin. Look at that spoiler, said Oliver. Those flames are wicked, said Lucas. Flames are so predictable, said Frankie. Did he say that out loud? What's your problem, Pickle, said Carter. I don't have a problem, said Frankie. I'm the one who's going to win the Pine Run 3000. The other kids all gasped. Oliver choked on his spit. How do you do that, said Carter, because I'm racing this. Look, that's Carter's car. So awesome. Uh, you can't see the tape on it. The boys all started to laugh at Carter's car. Not their reaction. Carter was hoping. I mean, not Carter. The boys all started to laugh at Frankie's car. Not their reaction. Frankie was hoping for. That paint job is all gloopy, said Kevin. It looks like someone stepped on it, said Oliver. Are those rainbows on the side, said Lucas? Those are laser beams, said Frankie, and I still say my car's faster than Carter's. Maybe we should race them today and find out, said Carter. How about recess, said Frankie. Winner gets pudding. You're on, said Carter. Chapter 9. Challenging Carter to a race seemed like a great idea in the moment, but as the morning crept on, Frankie wasn't so sure. Carter's car did look really awesome. Recess arrived. The kids all crowded around the jungle gym to make sure they had a good view. Word had traveled so fast that even the other graders were there to watch. Frankie looked over at Kenny and said, You think I have a shot at winning this, right? Kenny whistled a sound like a bomb being dropped. Not good. Frankie and Carter agreed that the croc screw slide was the best spot to race. They climbed up the ladder together and lined up their cars on the side's edge. The crowd fell silent. The race was about to start. Dun, dun, dun -a! One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go! We have a winner! Dun, dun, dun. Carter's car wins! Okay. Carter had won. Frankie scooped, scoop, scooped, oh my God, scooped up his jumbled mess of race car and shoved it into his backpack. His car, his race car was destroyed. He'd blown his chance to become a shrew scout. Chapter 10. Frankie was in a total funk. Nothing could cheer him up. Not even being home from school or dad's secret stash of oatmeal and chocolate covered raisin cookies or the marathon of his favorite TV show, Mega Morphin Mutant. Monsters. There was no way he'd be able to race in the Pine Run 3000. Maybe he could design a new car. He got out his sketch pad and, and some markers and went to work drawing the coolest race car. He could imagine. If he could wave the marker like a magic wand and turn his picture into a reality, Frankie was a droopy lump on the couch when Dad got home. Why so glum, chump? said dad i kind of crashed my car at school as the words came out frankie started to cry dad put his arm around him and said why don't we have a look at it i'm sure it's not as bad as you think frankie spilled the contents of his backpack onto the kitchen table it wasn't pretty there were definitely still parts that looked like a race car but something was sort of mixed up and smushed together yowzers said dad see i told you said frankie as he wiped his nose on his sleeve follow me said dad i want to show you something Dad led Frankie downstairs into the basement, past the boxes of Christmas decorations and unwanted... Uh, where am I? And unwanted heirlooms. Heirlooms was the door. Frankie knew it well. It was the one part of the house only Dad was allowed to enter. Not even Mom had access. And now Frankie was about to go inside. Chapter 11. If Dad was king... This room was definitely his castle. Frankie suddenly realized why no one else was allowed in his room. This was Dad's very own Hall of Awesome. Wow. Hall of Awesome. Look at this. 
guitar. That's so cool. Dad took one of the trophies from the shelf and blew it and blew off the dust. It looked heavy enough to be made of lead. This one was your grandfather's. He won the very first race in in fifty three. Back then, they called it the Pine Run Steeplechase. Sweet, said Frankie. Dad let him hold the trophy for a little bit. It was even heavier than it looked. Who do? Who do all the others belong to? They're mine, Dad said with a smile. Frankie wasn't sure he heard that right. Yours? It all started to make sense. The engravings, the engravings on the trophies, the newspaper clippings, the photographs of his dad and grandpa in their scout uniforms, shaking hands with important looking people. Frankie's family was two generations of Pine Run champions. Dad placed the trophy back on the shelf and traded it for a wooden box that looked like the kind of thing you kept cig cigars inside. In. Inside was a car that resembled an old fashioned hot road. Is that what you want? Is that? Is that what you want all these trophies with? said Frankie. Your great gra your your grandfather helped me build it, just like his dad helped him build his race car. Why didn't you tell me? You wanted to do this on your own. Yeah, that didn't go quite like I had planned, said Frankie. Can you help me become a champion like you and Grandpa? Dad had that twinkle in his eye again. I thought you'd never ask. Chapter 12. With Dad helping him, there was no way Frankie could lose the Pine Run 3000. There was only one teensy-winsy problem. His car, or what was left of it. Don't worry, said Dad. We can rebuild it together. Make it better. Faster. Frankie grabbed his sketch pad and showed Dad his new race car design. How about Spiffer? Spiffer. Dad examined Frankie's drawing. This is way cooler than anything I could have dreamed of, he smiled. Spiffer it is. Wow, so cool. Hey, there's him driving it right there. Time to get to work. I think, well, I think she needs a name. How about Green Lightning? Perfect. Chapter 13. The big day had arrived. Scout troops were gathered from far and wide for a chance to win the Pine Run 3000. Frankie couldn't believe how packed the assembly hall was. The entire county must have been there. From across the room, he saw Kenny. They waved their cars at each other for good luck. Kenny's car looked like a guitar with wheels. Frankie also looked, also saw the rest of his troop scattered about the crowd. He had hoped that maybe Carter would oversleep and mix up the date, but no such luck. There he was, shaking hands and posing for pictures with the grand possum, Pooba, even with green lightning. Frankie began to worry. Piper could see how nervous her brother was. You don't have to beat all those all these kids yourself, she said. Just stay focused on your own race and let everyone else eliminate each other. Piper's advice made sense. Frankie took a deep breath and felt a little calmer. Then that lasted for about two seconds. I found your track ass assignment, said Dad, who God can't read, who had Lucy strapped to his back. Frankie suddenly felt like he'd swallowed a swarm of butterflies. Mom kissed him on the cheek. Go get him, sweetie, she said before she had to leave the judge with, to judge the races with the other Marusopo mothers. The race courses were divided into three areas, each with an increasing level of difficulty. Frankie's first heat was Alpine Alley. He looked across the way to his competition, but he didn't recognize any of the other seven kids. They must have been from other troops. At least he didn't have to race Carter right away. That was a relief. Frankie placed his car on the starting line. He turned to Dad, who gave him a wink for confidence. Arglo licked his face for good luck. Showtime. Arglo, or whatever, however you say, is, is their dog. Why is their dog there? Three, two, one. I smell a loser. Must be your breath. Oh, 
you, no, you didn't. Frankie Pickle wins the first round. Woo, Frankie! Chapter 14. Piper practically tackled Frankie. She was so excited for him. Dad hugged him too. Lucy squealed. Argo jumped up and down on his hind legs. Frankie couldn't believe it. He had won his first race, but a celebration was cut short when he saw Kenny. How'd it go, dude? said Frankie. Kenny pulled out his har har harmonica and started playing the blues. Oh, said Frankie. Sorry you didn't win. Kenny gave a little shrug and smiled. He was happy that at least one of them was av advancing. Frankie checked the standings board. Carter had won his race too. Come on, said Piper. The other racers are already lining up for the next round. Kenny played a new tune. Da 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 da. Charge, said Frankie. They turned to his track assignment. Snake bud, snake bite speedway. Frankie found his place at the starting line. This time he recognized a scout from his troop. It was Melvin Grossman. Something about Melvin never seemed quite right. Maybe it was because he liked to draw skulls on his arms with markers, or how his laugh sounded like something out of a monster movie. Whatever it was, he, he gave Frankie the creeps. He gives me the creeps, too. He, has, he is so creepy. Round two, snake bite speedway. This track has more twists than a bowl of spaghetti. How do you sound like a car? Chapter 15. Disqualified, said the Marsville mother, mother judging the race. Throwing chewing gum on the track is unsportsmanlike conduct. Melvin tried to deny he was the one who did it, but sticky fingers gave him away. Frankie had won the semifinal final round by default and was advancing to the final round. But it didn't matter. His tires were so gunked up from Melvin's gum, it would be impossible to race again. It was all over. Carter, who had just won his race, walked over to Frankie. I guess you're here to rub it in, said Frankie. What Melvin did was really lame, said Carter. When I beat you, Pickle, I want to win fair and square, not because he cheated. Well, there's no way that's going to happen. My car is ruined. Carter reached into his emergency utility pouch and retrieved a bottle of orange liquid. He handed it to Frankie. This goo remover should do the trick. That was a pretty cool thing for Carter to do. Maybe he wasn't so bad after all. May the best scout win. May the best, may the best scout win. Chapter 16. Final round. The Pine Run 3000. Carter versus Frankie. Woo! Do we like to pause and take a look at the pictures? Carter Hawkins were, was declared the winner of the Pine Run 3000. This meant that Frankie would not earn enough possum points to become a, tr a shrew with the rest of his troop. He'd remain a Pajimi possum scout until the next session. Everyone tried to cheer Frankie up, but it was no use. Mom and the other Marsupial mothers stepped onto the stage with the Grand Possum Pooba to hand out their to out their awards. The trophy for third place went to a boy from a scout troop two towns over. Frankie was called up next. He accepted his second place trophy with the best with the biggest smile he could muster. Really, he just wanted to go home and cry. The trophy was cool, but that didn't change his rank. Frankie held his held his fake smile until he was back in the crowd with his family. I think I'd like to go now, he said. Frankie, wait, said Dad. This isn't going to be one of those moments where you tell me winning or losing doesn't matter, is it? No, I was, I was going to tell you that they haven't announced all the winners yet. Huh? The Grand Possum Booba's voice boomed through the hall. Franklin Lorzino Picoline. Piccolini. Everyone was applauding. Argo howled. Kenny hit. Kenny whistled the loudest. Dad gave Frankie a little mudge toward the stage and said, Don't keep the grand possum Pooba waiting. Chapter 17. 
Frankly, slowly, slowly made his way to the front of the crowd. It all felt like a dream. Strangers ruffled his hair and patted him on the back and gave him high fives. Even Carter was cheering for him. Looks like we're both winners, dude, said Carter. Standing on the stage next to the grand possum booba was mom. All smiles and tears. She was holding a medal that looked different from the other awards. Congratulations, Frankie. Said the grand possum Poopa as he shook Frankie's hand. I don't understand, said Frankie. You won first place for most outstanding race car design. And the grand possum Poopa, said the grand possum Poopa. Frankie had been so upset about losing to Carter, he didn't even realize there were other prizes. Does this mean I have enough? I have enough awesome? Does this mean I have enough? Oh my god. Does this mean I have enough awesome? I mean, possum points to become a shrew scout? Yes, it does, said mom. Wonder Pickle, we announce you a member of the League of Awesome. Go forth with your awesomeness. I couldn't have done it without the help of dad man. Teamwork got the job done, but the design was all yours, Wonder Pickle. Awesome! The end. All right, guys, that was one of the most amazing stories. Also, really, really fun that it was about race cars. I usually never read stories like this. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.